Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. For those of you who do not know me, my name's Sam. I am a hairdresser. Every so often, I like to share stories of bad, uncomfortable situations that I have had with clients. The reason I like to share these stories is so that they can hopefully be relatable in some kind of way because the reality is, if you work in the beauty industry, you're bound to have a bad experience at some point. And I know in those situations and immediately afterwards, you feel terrible. You feel like you're awful at your job. You wanna just go crawl up in a ball and hide and cry. This is how I handle these situations. So the story that I have for you today isn't like super crazy or scandalous. It's sort of just like your standard situation where a client just didn't really have realistic expectations. There was some kind of miscommunication and they were unhappy in the end. But I feel like it taught me a lot and made me a lot more cautious moving forward. If you are interested in these kinds of videos, just want to know more about what it's like being a hairdresser or just like to see weekly vlogs of like normal average people living a normal average life, maybe consider subscribing to my channel. I post new videos every week. Anyway, let's get into the story. So this occurred a couple years ago, back when I was still doing hair in Pennsylvania. She had reached out to me on Instagram and said that she wanted to come in for a consultation for a possible color correction. Her hair naturally was very dark. It was also really thick and coarse. Um, she was Latina, just to like kind of give you an idea of like the kind of hair she had. And she said that several months ago she was fully blonde, like a full solid rooted blonde, which she had gotten done at a salon. And then like a month or two after that, she changed her mind and wanted to go back to her natural color. So she dyed her hair herself. And then of course naturally had faded and she had just been like keeping up with that. She kept coloring her hair black or like a really, really dark brown a few times over the next few months. And now she changed her mind again and she wants to go back blonde. So that's what she was coming to me for. She wanted me to bleach her hair and make her ideally an all over bright blonde again. One of my specialties is doing color corrections and big color transformations. I regularly will have clients that come in with really dark hair, kind of like my color, and I will make them blonde in one sitting. It absolutely can be done. It's very time consuming. It takes a lot of patience, a lot of work, a lot of skill. You have to be very like meticulous, take very, very teeny tiny thin foils at a time. It's a big process, but it is doable in some cases. Ideally, if your hair is virgin and has no color on it at all whatsoever, or if you only colored your hair like a handful of times using professional color, or like demi-permanent color. However, if you bleach your hair, especially bleach it so significantly, going literally from the darkest level possible to the lightest level possible, in one sitting, that's a lot of trauma to put your hair through. But then you put color back in it and you go super dark again, and then you keep layering that super dark color over and over a few times. Just because you are going back to being a brunette does not mean that you're reversing the process that you put your hair through. Because at this point it's been bleached and that's it. You cannot reverse the bleaching process. It's just, that's just not how it works. You want me to now bleach your hair again, but the foundation underneath, because it was bleached so much before, it's a lot weaker. So it's not the same as bleaching virgin hair. And sometimes that color will come out and you can go back to a lighter shade, but it really varies person to person. Like I said, it had been less than a year since she did the original like big transformation. And at that point when she had came into me, it's not like the dark color looked super faded and it looked like Oh, okay, we could probably do some clarifying treatments and a color remover and we can lighten it up pretty easily. Her hair was dark. That color looked like it was in there good. So she came in for a consultation. We talked about her hair history. She's always, like she has a history of going from blonde back to dark, back to blonde, back to dark. So that was kind of like my red flag number one because A, it shows that like, 
Their hair has been through a lot. It shows that she's very indecisive with her hair color. It shows that she's very impatient as well because she would always make these changes in a short time frame. So anyway, I told her, let's do a test strand. Let's just see what happens. That'll give us an idea of what's possible. If your hair can even handle being bleached right now, if the color will come out at all. We did a test strand and the color was actually coming out, not completely. It did get very, very warm, which is to be expected, but it did get lighter and it didn't completely melt off. So I told her, we can attempt to lighten your hair. However, would you be comfortable cutting a few inches off if necessary. It's always a possible risk. Just because this one particular test strand came out okay and didn't get super damaged, I don't know how other spots on your head are going to react when we do the full thing. So if there is any damage, would you be okay with having to do a haircut? She said, yes, that's fine with her. My next issue of concern is the test strand, although it did lighten, it didn't come out super clean and even and perfect the way it would if it was virgin hair. Oh, obviously, like that is to be expected. So I didn't really feel comfortable doing her entire head one solid color because I felt like, A, if it comes out really uneven, it's not gonna look good and that's gonna be really difficult to try to even out with toner and then the toner fades over time and it's just gonna be kind of a hot mess. And B, I don't know how light her entire head is gonna get. And if we're only able to do like a caramel kind of color, it might not be the most flattering on her if we do just like one solid color. But if we do something more dimensional, like a balayage, and we just add some like blended lighter pieces throughout her hair, that would be a lot easier to disguise any unevenness. It'll blend a lot nicer with her natural color. And then from there, we can kind of gradually over time, keep adding more, keep lightening her more as her hair grows out and all of that like old artificial traumatized hair gets cut off and we have more natural virgin hair to work with, you know, we can keep getting lighter and brighter and eventually get her back to the blonde that she ultimately wants. But I knew it was not gonna be possible to do it in one session. I didn't really feel comfortable even attempting to do it because I just didn't think the end result was going to be pretty. She was literally there for over an hour. And granted, we were doing the test strand so that to sit for a little while, but normally when I do a consultation, it's no more than like 20, 30 minutes maximum. She was there for over an hour. And I really felt like I kept repeating the same things because I really wanted to make sure that she fully understood what I was saying to her and that she was agreeing to everything before we actually booked the appointment and moved forward with anything. She agreed to everything. She said everything made sense to her. She was okay with having to cut the ends. She was okay with it being a caramel color and not getting super blonde and super light in the one session. Another thing looking back, and this is such like a small random thing. And I think subconsciously, like I had a feeling that this wasn't gonna go well, but whatever. But we were talking about the Grande Lash Serum. I was using it at the time and she said it really burned the crap out of her eyes every time she used it. But she was like, but I mean, I don't care. I still use it anyway. And I was like, mm, that's probably not a good idea. But I was like, well, how much of it do you use? Because I know the directions say to just dip it in one time and just use one swipe for both eyes. Like maybe you're applying too much. Turns out she was way over applying it, putting so much on each eye because she like wanted the best results as quickly as possible. This is just the type of person that wants instant gratification that doesn't have any patience, that doesn't follow rules or instructions, that just kind of like glazes over things and doesn't take warnings or professional advice seriously. But if you ever have a client like that, and especially if they are looking for a color correction, proceed with caution. Okay, so the day of her appointment, she comes in, again, she had been there less than a week ago when we did this over an hour long consultation. So I thought we were good, but I summarized everything that we had talked about just to make sure that she was still 
on board with that. She said yes, everything seemed good. And I began the process of doing her balayage. Eventually after sitting and processing for a certain amount of time, I felt like, okay, I'm gonna rinse these out now because I feel like if I leave this to sit for too much longer, the hair is gonna start to kind of break down. And even though she said she's okay with cutting a few inches off, I really would like to avoid that if possible because she wasn't like thrilled with the idea of it, you know? So I thought it's better to just keep the integrity of her hair, keep it as long as possible, as healthy as possible. So for those of you who understand hair levels, she lifted to about a level seven, level eight. Again, it was like not, you know, super even, obviously some, places lifted a little bit more than others. So like a caramel color, very, very warm. And when that happens, you use a toner to kind of neutralize the color to give it a more flattering tone. So that way you're not leaving the hair orange. But in order to do that, you have two options. You can either go down and make the hair darker so that it has a more cool tone to it, but then it's gonna not be that light. Or you can kind of work with some of that warmth and just do more of like a caramel toffee kind of tone. So that's what I decided to do because I figured if I went darker, then she would feel like, well, what the hell? We just spent all that time and I'm spending all this money. I'm still a brunette. I have no blonde in my hair at all. The good news was we didn't end up having to cut a lot of hair off. And then as I was blow drying it, I could already see She's looking at herself in the mirror and she's like doing one of these. And that is mm, one of like the most anxiety inducing feelings as a stylist when you can just tell that the client is like not really loving what they're seeing, but you're not done blowing it out yet. So you wanna like just finish and show them like the final product and like, let them go look at it outside. And like, before you go and change anything, you want them to like really get a good look at it and really make sure if they like it or not. And she was telling me that it was brassy and it's not what she wanted and she didn't like the color and she thought it was ugly. So I explained to her, well, I can retone it, but we would have to make it darker. That's the only option that we have right now. The only way we can make this less brassy is by lightening it more, which we can do, but I can't do that today. That would be a whole other appointment because we would have to completely repeat everything that we already did. And mind you, she has a lot of hair and it's very thick and very coarse. So it took a long time. And because it was so dark and everything it had been through, I had to take very, very, very thin, fine pieces. Or I told her that we you know, could tone it down a little bit, but then it would be darker. She didn't want to do that either. So I was like, we talked about this. I showed you what the test strand looked like during our initial consultation. I explained to you that it would probably be like a caramel tone. I even had showed her swatches and I, I told her, you know, like I cannot predict, I cannot promise you what it's gonna come out like or how light it's gonna end up being. But I showed her examples. I was like, best case scenario, maybe it could look like this. Worst case scenario, it could look like this. And what she ended up with was kind of somewhere in the middle, but I think, she was hoping for a best case scenario or you know, even better than that. But I just felt really upset and defeated. And I don't really know what else I can say at this point. Like, I feel like I already spent so much breath trying to go through all of this with her, explaining everything, making sure she was on the same page as me. And now even after all of that, she's unhappy, even though the results we got were what we discussed. So yeah, she said, yeah, I wanna try to lighten it some more to get it lighter, get rid of the brassiness. So I explained, okay, well, we'll have to book another appointment then for a future date. And she was like, well, how much is that gonna cost? I was like, well, it's gonna cost the same as today's appointment, which by the way, I always discuss prices during my consultations. So she knew before I put any color on her hair, she knew how much it was gonna cost her. So I told her each appointment is gonna cost the same thing because it's gonna be the same process. And she was not happy with that. And again, it goes back to what I was saying about like the red flags, seeming like the type of person that just wants that instant gratification, wants to just take like the fastest, easiest, cheapest route. And listen, I understand that 
color corrections can be really expensive and getting your hair colored can be expensive, but also it's not necessary. It's something that you are choosing to do, something that you want, and it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of skill, especially for color corrections. Not every stylist does color corrections or knows how to. And like I said, she had a lot of hair. This is not just something that I'm like doing for funsies. Like this is my career. This is how I make a living, how I pay my bills. I have to charge for the work that I'm doing. And let's be real. I mean, I was just like in some small town in Pennsylvania. So the prices that I was charging were very, very reasonable compared to what a lot of other stylists out there charge. If you go to like a bigger city or something like that. So it's not like I'm over here charging her thousands of dollars. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get any after pictures of her hair because what am I supposed to do? If she's like so on happy and about to start crying and it's like this awkward weird situation I'm gonna be like hey can we step outside so I can take some photos like no <laughs> but her final hair was pretty and I, I mean it's like something that I feel like a lot of people specifically request but it's just not I guess what she was hoping for she ended up paying she did not tip me a single dollar which that's fine and I was like well you know we can book the next appointment now while you're here if you want she was like um no, I'll just call. She never called. And I'm sure that her ass went straight to Sally's after she left the salon and probably went and got some black color and went home and dyed her hair dark again. I can guarantee it. But what did I learn from this experience? Like I said, looking out for the red flags, not necessarily to turn clients away because you never know. Like sometimes you might get a weird vibe from somebody and then they surprise you and it ends up being fine. You know, this is your job. You gotta make a living. You can't just turn people away every time you get like a weird feeling from somebody unless you're some like real exclusive celebrity hairstylist or something. But for like us regular folk, we gotta make money. <laughs> we gotta pay our bills. But being intuitive, knowing what to look out for, really paying attention to the small details, just so that way you can kind of keep your guard up a little bit and prepare yourself for things to possibly not go so well. Because I feel like when these things happen, but you were kind of prepared for it, it's not as devastating as when it completely comes out of left field. And then it also taught me that I need to get things in writing when I do consultations, especially with color correction consultations. So I have since typed up a little color correction consent form, and it basically just lists out everything that we discuss during the consultation so that the client has to initial each thing and then sign and date the form. You can just go on Google. And there's some that you can literally just print out as is, but I decided to just like make my own based on like what I know I normally talk about during the consultation and just like concerns and issues I've had in the past with some clients. But mine just basically says, my stylist and I have discussed my hair history and current hair routine. I promise that I've been completely honest about everything I've done to my hair in the past one to two years, which is, and then I have a line for them to like, write it down, or I, I can just write it down really quick. I understand that although my stylist will do her best, this is a corrective service and my final results are not guaranteed. I understand that it may take multiple sessions, all of which are separate appointments that must be paid for individually to achieve my desired result. I understand that my hair may become damaged during this process. I agree to pay the hourly rate and then I put in parentheses what the rate is for this service. And I understand that the length of my appointment can be anywhere between three to 10 hours long. I agree to follow my stylist aftercare instructions. I feel like that just kind of covers all of the bases. So I highly recommend doing something similar. Like I said, whether you type up your own or you just print one out that you find online and having this form, having things in writing, that's not necessarily going to change the client's reaction at the end of the service. They might still be unhappy if, you know, their expectations were unrealistic or whatever the case is. And to give the client benefit of the doubt, maybe it just gets really overwhelming because there is a lot of information that we're discussing and maybe they just forget certain things or they're just like so excited to get their hair done and they're just stuck on like this certain image in their mind that 
they kind of gloss over everything that you're trying to explain to them. And they're just like hoping for the best case scenario. But at least then you can pull out that form and be like, hey, look, remember this? You signed this. That way they can't try and say like, oh, well, you didn't explain that to me. Or, oh, I don't remember you saying that. You never said that. It's not like your word against theirs. You literally have it in writing with their signature. That has been a huge lifesaver for me moving forward. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that it helped you feel a little bit better if you have recently gone through a situation like this. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please take a second to just give the video a thumbs up. It really helps push the video out into, you know, the algorithm and all that. And I will see you really soon in my next video. Bye.